Welcome to CMTV, where today we're discussing the recent rating upgrade on ArcelorMittal and prevailing conditions in the steel sector. I'm Simon Redmond from S&P Global Ratings Commodities Team, and I'm very pleased to be joined today by Peter Brennan, the Senior Editor on European Steel from S&P Global Platts. Welcome, Peter. Thanks for having me. So Platts and ratings are two distinct divisions of S&P Global. So while our sector coverage overlaps in steel and in fact across commodities in general, we maintain analytical and editorial independence within S&P Global. I'm the S&P Global Ratings Prime Analyst on ArcelorMittal, the world's largest steel producer, and recently we upgraded our ratings to BB Plus from BB. This followed robust Q1 results and an established trend of deleveraging with both lower debt uh, on average and more cash flow coming through. So in summary, we think our ratings on ArcelorMittal should be more resilient to any future downturns. Peter. What's the latest you're hearing on ArcelorMittal? Well, obviously, it's, uh, it's been a much better year for ArcelorMittal and the steel markets in general. Uh, the most interesting thing right now is Ilva, a big Italian steel producer. Uh, it's they're in the process of, of purchasing it, completing the deal for that. We understand that the special commissioners involved have recommended that ArcelorMittal's bid for that works um, be well, su the successful one. Uh, and it's up for the Italian government now to decide whether or not it will be. It's a very important deal because it's it's a, a very fragmented sector in Europe. And we've been talking about merger and acquisition activity being required um, because it's far too fragmented. Well, this deal would give potentially 40% of the, the coil market to ArcelorMittal. So that's so hot roll coil, a bellwether product, commodity grade product for steel. Um, and it's, it's, it's very important because it gives pricing power, it changes the dynamics in the market that's always been kind of top top heavy. You've got the, the Western Europeans at one price level, the Southern Europeans kind of draining that price. And this would give a more um, combined structural feel of the market. Okay, that's very interesting. Okay. And I guess, um, yeah, the deal obviously let to be formally com sort of uh, announced and all the rest of it. But uh, I guess we indirectly pointed to the potential for moderately sized strategically aligned acquisitions in our, in our upgrades. So while it's not explicitly factored in, it's maybe the kind of transaction um, that we would see as being uh, consistent uh, with the upgrade. Because it is it's extra debt being taken on at a time when ArcelorMittal have been looking to cut debt. Right, that's a fair point. So, okay, so I guess the uh, the context there is we, we believe the deleveraging trend will continue. Uh -huh. um, actually, we saw a, a bit of an increase in debt in Q1 as a result of working capital uh, as well. So um, it, it's fair to say if they take on additional debt as well as a result of a, an acquisition, potentially that slows down the deleveraging trend. But I guess that's the point. It's slowing down rather than reversing. And, and that's what's sort of the, the critical assumption, I guess, behind behind the ratings. So maybe more broadly then, how, how, how are you seeing, and, and you know, the, the people you talk to in the market, how are they seeing the, the market evolving at the moment? I mean, uh, clearly some prices have come off, but yeah, what do you see? Well, certainly steel prices are dropping at the moment. Um, international prices really rebounded through 2016. Uh, that's why we're seeing all the financial results now um, for the first quarter in Europe in particular are very strong and improving. Um, Q4 was also good, and so we're expe the expectations are Q2, Q3 will probably continue to be, to be good. Um, steel prices are falling, but you've got to bear in mind the, the high starting point. And also raw materials have come right down as well. So if you're an ArcelorMittal, you're looking at, they, they produce a lot of iron ore, um, so maybe the mining sector will not do so well, but that passes on into their, their steel, which is a much bigger sector for them. And so the margins on the steel should still be strong, even, even with this substantial drop off in steel prices at the moment. And it's certainly not a crash by any means. Uh, I think an interesting thing, uh, development is anti-dumping duties, trade cases now, massive issue in, in steel, uh, and ArcelorMittal particularly affected in, in the North American region and the European region, where there was a lot of, a lot of trade case activity going on. Um, so we really have to see if imports are affected by that substantially, and to see what kind of impact that has on steel markets long term. But certainly the short term um, impact appears to be that it supported steel prices. Absolutely, I think I think that's exactly what we're seeing, as you say, both in North America and and, and, and in Europe, where those tariffs have been put up. Um, I guess what's important for us is, you know, the ongoing cost cutting that Arcelor has in place with Vision 2020. Um, you know, trying to get the uh, EBITDA per ton up over eighty-five dollars a well, eighty-five dollars a ton. Um, th that as a as a long-term goal is equally important because we know at some point the cycle will turn. Mm -hmm. But as you say, maybe for now things are uh, things are actually looking not too bad. 
Yeah, certainly the long-term situation is still that there's overcapacity that has to be sorted. Um, but if you look at if you look at Europe, if you look at the Ilva deal, that's certainly a good sign going forward. I think for a lot of people that those sorts of issues are starting to be resolved. Okay, great. And um, maybe one question we get as well is in in terms of you know further improvement. I mean, maybe in terms of steel margins, could you see things actually getting any better, or is is the only way down from here? Well, iron ore is down to $60, and we were talking to Nev Power, the CEO of Fortescue, um, the Australian miner, uh, and he was saying this is a kind of normal, new normal now, around $60 rather than $95 earlier in the year. So that's a significant saving to, to the steel margins. Coking coal also was around $300. It's come right back down to around 140 at the moment. Could even be further downside there. Um, so raw material weakness is, is definitely there. Uh, the, the, real depend, the real factor for, for steel is what what happens in China. Um, it produces and consumes half the world's steel. Uh, and there's been a mini rally there after a bit of a downturn. But really, it's what happens in the Chinese economy uh, that, that drives steel demand. And right. you know that's a, that's a tricky one to analyze. I'll leave that to you. OK. Well, on the, on the macro side, I guess thing, the base case is thing, things keep rolling on over there. But, um, but yeah, no, I, I think there, are, there, are, there could be some challenges longer term. And I guess for our ratings on Arcelor, the key, the key consideration is, OK, how much headroom do we need in those ratings? And indeed, were the ratings, you know, we have a stable outlook today, but were the ratings to go up uh, a further notch to, uh, to triple B minus in the future, I think we'd obviously be looking for an even greater degree of resilience to any potential downturns in the market. Well, Peter, many thanks for that. Very Thank interesting. You. Um, you can find more reporting and research on plats.com and smp.com, and also on the global credit portal through Capital IQ. Many thanks for your attention.